Bitcoin's price is being driven by a massive shift happening deep inside the derivatives market, and almost nobody's talking about it. Over the past two months, over a third of the leveraged futures positions have been fully wiped out, marking the largest dollar decline in Bitcoin's open interest ever. So in this video, I'm breaking down exactly what's happened under the surface and showing you the key metrics that reveal the true scale of this event in real time. So let's get into it. Now, people love talking about the spot markets, but the truth is, is that the heartbeat of the Bitcoin day-to-day -day volatility comes from one place, and that's derivatives. And once you understand the dynamics there, you start seeing the bigger picture much more clearly. Derivatives are worth focusing on because they now account for roughly 75% of all trading volume, while spot markets only about 25%. So three quarters of all activity, all the leverage, all the liquidations, all the short-term positioning, is happening in the derivatives arena, not in spot. And that means that Bitcoin's market structure, its volatility, and a huge portion of its price discovery are heavily shaped by what's happening in futures, perps, and options, and not just simple buy and sell spot activity. And as you probably already know, leverage dramatically amplifies the volatility. You see it during every move. Markets stretch, funding rates spike, positions get crowded, and then a small move in price triggers forced selling or forced buying which then cascades into something much bigger. And the most recent example of this was the crash in October, where total futures liquidations spiked to over $600 million per hour at the peak. Think about that. $600 million per hour being forcibly wiped out because people were positioned too aggressively. And when the market reaches that kind of stress, it tells you everything you need to know about how dominant the derivatives landscape has become. But before we go deeper into the specific indicators, Let's very quickly run through the Bitcoin derivatives and what they actually are, just in case you need a quick refresher. Now, derivatives are essentially bets on Bitcoin's price without actually owning the underlying Bitcoin. The first major category is futures. A future is simply a contract where you agree to buy or sell Bitcoin at a specific price on a specific date in the future, hence the name. It's essentially a way to lock in a price later on. These contracts are highly liquid and institutions love them which is why futures volume is becoming so massive right now. And then we've got perpetual swaps, or perps. And these are similar to futures, except they never expire. Instead, they use something called a funding rate. And every eight hours, traders either pay or receive a small funding fee, depending on whether the perp price is above or below the spot price. And this keeps the perp market closely aligned with the real Bitcoin price. Otherwise, it would drift and become completely detached, and arbitration opportunities open up. Now, perps are by far the most traded instrument in crypto because they're simple, they're liquid, and they give traders 24-7 access to leverage. And then finally, we have options. Now, options give you the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell Bitcoin at a set price in the future. They're incredibly useful for hedging, for directional betting, for some types of volatility trades, and for just constructing more complex strategies in general. And in TradFi, options definitely dominate. And in crypto, they're growing fast, especially on venues like Deribit. Now, all three of these can be traded with significant leverage, anywhere from mild 2x leverage all the way up to an insane 100x leverage on some offshore exchanges. And with that level of leverage, tiny price moves can make you rich, or more often, blow you out your position entirely. And most traders don't actually close their trades, they're actually liquidated. But anyway, enough of all that, let's get into the indicators. And first up here, we've got the Bitcoin futures open interest. Now, open interest is simply the total dollar value of all currently open futures contracts that have not yet been closed or settled. It's essentially the total amount of leverage bets that are still active in the system. High open interest means there's a huge amount of money that's still tied up in leverage positions. And when the price moves sharply, which it never takes Bitcoin too long to do, all of that open interest becomes fuel. It either forces people out or pushes people further in, and both of those can accelerate the volatility dramatically. Now I like to think of open interest as dry powder sitting in a room full of sparks. The bigger it gets, the more violently things can explode. And in this cycle, it's been fairly predictable. Open interest has tracked almost perfectly with Bitcoin spot price. When spot went up, open interest surged, and when spot cooled, open interest pulled back again. And right at the beginning of October, Open interest reached an insane peak at over $92 billion in active futures positions. And that was the high. After that, things unraveled pretty fast. 
open interest saw its largest percentage decline in this entire cycle, a drop of more than 35%. But in dollar terms, open interest fell from $92 billion down to $59 billion, which is at now, which is the largest dollar decline in open interest we've ever seen. And it's back down to levels we haven't seen since April of this year. Or in other words, a full third of all leveraged futures positions across the market were wiped out in about a month and a half. And when you get a decline that sharp, in that short of a window, it means one thing. An enormous amount of leveraged positions were forced closed or liquidated because traders were on the wrong side of the move. It's just like walking into a casino and seeing that one third of the gamblers just get kicked out. Not because they cashed out, but because the house liquidated them. And when that happens, it almost always signals a trend shift. The market was positioned one way, which in this case was long, and then the price moved against that positioning, triggering a brutal flush. And sometimes these flushes mark the end of the trend entirely, but other times they mark the pause, the clearing of the slate, before the original trend continues. And right now, the data suggests that we've gone through a serious cleansing phase. The leverage has been fully burnt off, and the positioning looks like it's fully reset. Now let's look at the next metric because it's way more telling of what's actually happened. This here is the 30 day percentage change in open interest. And it's super powerful because instead of looking at the raw number, it looks at how fast open interest is changing each month. It measures the monthly difference in open interest across all major future exchanges such as CME, Binance, Bybit, OKX, basically all of them. And this is definitely one of the richest sources of signal in the derivative space because it shows you the rate at which traders are piling in or being washed out. And whenever this metric produces a big green spike, which corresponds to about a 40 to 60% increase in open interest within a month, it is almost always aligned with local price tops. A surge like that means traders are rushing in with leverage and chasing moves and simply just getting overconfident. And when the market as a whole becomes confident, that's when you need to become less confident, or in other words, a contrarian. It's one of the purest sentiment indicators because it's not based on surveys or moods, it's based on actual positioning with real money behind it. And the opposite is true for the red spikes, which are the negative monthly changes in open interest. These show periods where leveraged traders are leaving the market, voluntarily or otherwise. And historically, whenever this 30-day metric hits levels of around minus 15 to minus 25%, it lines up with major local bottoms pretty well. It's the signal that leverage has been flushed, fear has taken over, and the market has generally reset. And right now, we're actually at one of those moments. Open interest is down about negative 15% on a monthly basis, and this lines up almost perfectly with prior bottoming zones over the last two or three years. But we can take this a step further with the next indicator, which is the 60-day percentage change in open interest. And this one smooths out the noise even more because it looks at the bi-monthly change instead of a single month. And in general, the bigger the window, the cleaner the signal. And this is where things get generally striking. On a 60-day basis, we're currently sitting at the lowest reading of the entire cycle at around minus 30%. And that means over a two-month window, open interest has dropped by almost a third. And that's an enormous deleveraging event that quantifies the flush far more clearly than any liquidation chart ever could. And when you see a negative 30% bi-monthly washout like this, it is almost always considered a reset phase where the market clears out the excess leverage before continuing its longer-term trend, whichever way that is. And a drawdown this deep usually tells us that the market has hit an exhaustion point where the prior trend becomes so crowded that it simply can't sustain itself and these periods often mark the point where the tourists disappear and only the most resilient capital remains. And historically, once this base layer of stronger, unleveraged participants is left standing, the market becomes far healthier and far more stable and definitely more capable of sustaining its next major move. Finally, let's talk about the open interest year-on-year -year change, which is the macro view of how open interest is growing or shrinking compared to the same time last year. And this is useful because as adoption increases and as more participants enter the derivative space, this metric tends to trend upward over the long run. More adoption usually means more open interest, more volume and just more liquidity in general. But something different is happening right now. We've just printed our first ever negative year-on-year -year reading since I began tracking this with reliable exchange data back in 2023. 
open interest is actually down about 5% compared to where it was a year ago, which equates to about almost $2 billion less leverage futures exposure, despite the fact that Bitcoin was trading around $65,000 at that time. And that tells me two things. Firstly, the growth in speculative leverage is well below the trend compared to the spot price appreciation. And secondly, it reinforces the idea that a major out-of-the-ordinary flush has just happened. The derivatives market clearly just hasn't had a temporary cooldown. It's reset aggressively. And when you combine the year-on-year decline with the minus 30% bi-monthly drop and minus 15% monthly drop, picture becomes very clear. And this is what it looks like when leverage leaves the system in a meaningful way. This means that for the first time in a very long time, the market is not being supported by an ever-increasing mountain of fresh leverage. And it signifies that a structural pause in the hypergrowth of the derivative space, like a moment of maturity, or perhaps a temporary consolidation in financial participants, is underway. But stepping back, what does this all actually mean? Well, it means that the derivatives market has undergone a significant capitulation and a cleanup, which has caused the largest deleveraging event of this entire cycle. The system has essentially flushed out the excess leverage which was the over-leveraged weak hands who were relying on the tightest margins, and they've all been wiped out. So from a technical and market structure perspective, it's just a supremely healthy event. So to me, the market has reset the internal speculative pressure, and now a new, potentially more sustainable foundation is being built. And this cleansing removes the most explosive fuel from the system and reduces the chance of a sudden cascading liquidation event, at least in the near term which means we could be in store for another exciting episode of Bitcoin chopping around for months and months again. So if we do get any sort of subsequent rally or a breakdown, it will likely be driven by a more grounded spot market rather than just reckless exuberance. We've now moved from a market where speculative risk has just been violently neutralised. And when you see this kind of wipeout, you're usually closer to the end of the correction rather than the beginning. So price may still chop, consolidate, or fake out a few more times, as it always does. But the big picture is that the over-leveraged portion of the market has now been humbled. And when that happens, markets can eventually breathe again. Now, if you want to track these indicators in real time, make sure you're subscribed, because I'll be releasing my new charting suite over the next three to four days probably. So stay tuned. And let me know in the comments section down below. Do you think this flushing of leverage means a bottom is in? Or is there still more pain to come? I look forward to reading your comments and I'll catch you all in the next one.